Hi, this is Lesson 5.5, Integration Involving the Natural Logarithmic Function. Really, all you're going to be looking for now is a u in the denominator and a u prime in the numerator, and then you're going to have natural log. Once you get the hang of this, this should go pretty quick. So we know that the derivative of ln of the absolute value of x is equal to 1 over x. So if we work in reverse, then we're going to get ln of the absolute value of x. Why we include this in the antiderivative is because the domain of the natural log function has to give me a positive value to be plugged in there. So we use the absolute value when we work in reverse. This one right here, this is what we're going to be looking for now. u in the denominator, u prime in the numerator. So when I take the antiderivative of that, I'm just going to get ln absolute value of u plus c. I'll probably do it a little bit more elaborate with u substitution. Some of you can see better patterns with that, but um, I like to do it that way. So the log rules, there they are. Now here is a little bit note about the absolute value. Since both of these are true, why do we do this one? Well, it's what I just said, because for the domain for, F of, um, for ln x, x has to be greater than 0. So this will cover both of them for us, or all x's, I should say. Examples, this one here. So this is just a constant multiple. I didn't have to write this because I think you can see this, but I'm doing it for effect. So this would just be negative 3 ln absolute value of x plus c. That is your antiderivative. Here, if I let u equal p squared plus 1, du is equal to 2p dp. So I need a 2 in here. Balance it off. So I'm going to get 1 half. Now if I notice, I get u prime over u. And then that would be du. So I don't really need this. I shouldn't write that there, but that's just a 1. So when I rewrite this, this is just going to be 1 half ln whatever my u is. My u is p squared plus 1. So what I'm really doing is just working off the balancing of that constant there and then putting ln of u in there. No problem. Here, <coughs> excuse me, this is, I'm going to try this. I see t cubed. So that should give me 3t squared minus 2t dt. Now, I don't have that exactly up here, but I do have a multiple of that. So I can pull this 3 out. Now, there is no balancing here. All I'm doing is saying, well, I got a kind of an extra 3. It's the same thing as over here. So what I do is I go 3, and then the antiderivative of 1 over u du. And then that just becomes 3 ln, and then what is my u? t cubed minus t squared plus c. There it is. And then number four, do you see a function and its derivative? I hope you do. So this is u is equal to tangent of x. du is equal to the secant squared of x dx. So now I hope you can kind of get the hang of this, but this is just going to be ln of what is my u. Well, it's the tangent plus c. There's your answer. Okay, so all you're doing a lot of times is just looking to see if you have a function and it's derivative in the numerator. Function on the denominator, derivative on the numerator. Okay, so for example number five, if we see, and this explains it up here, if we see a degree in the numerator that is one more than the, or greater than or equal to what's in the denominator, we should try to use long division to sort this out. Now long division means that I'm going to be taking putting the numerator below and then the denominator outside. So if I do the long division here, this would just be a 1. That would give me an x squared. Make sure you line these up, plus 2. When I subtract, all I'm going to be left with is a negative 4x. So that's your remainder, plus negative 4x over x squared plus 2. So now I have a new problem. I have this dx plus negative 4x over x squared plus 2. I should have, for convenience, taken this negative and made 
this sign negative, but I hope you can sort that out. Now on this one, this one's very easy. Antiderivative would just be x. This part, though, I'd have to do a u substitution. Well, I need a 2, and I got too much there, so I can split that up to a negative 2 times 2, and that gives me my negative 4. And so then I do have my u substitution. So this would just be negative 2 ln absolute value x squared plus 2 plus c. Now, if you can't see what I did there with my u substitution, write it out for yourself and see how you can sort that out. Some of you can get this, and some of you will have to do it the long way. No worries. Both ways work great. Now, finally, for this one, you can do some analysis here and realize that this thing is always positive. Safe if you just put in the absolute value symbols, but you're also smarter than that, so you can say x squared plus 2 is always positive, so I don't need the absolute value symbols. Okay, now number 6 is a little bit different, and this one throws people off a little bit, but do you see a function and its derivative? Pause and check it out. Well, maybe you see that u is equal to ln x, so du is equal to 1 over x dx. Oh, I do have 1 over x, even though it looks like just an x. It is 1 over x. So then this substitution be, just becomes u du. So when I do the antiderivative, this is u squared over 2 plus c. Do a back substitution, and this is going to be ln x quantity squared over 2 plus c. Now this one right here, don't try to do the plug rule or pull that out in front because that 2 has to be on x, not on ln x. So in other words, this is done as it is. Example 7. Maybe you want to pause this and try this one yourself. Do you see a function and its derivative? I think so. u is equal to 2 minus ln x du is equal to 1 over x dx. I do have the 1 over x right here again, dx. And so when I rewrite this, this is going to be 1 over u cubed du. So now that's u to the negative 3. And so I think you can go ahead and do that one. And I just saw a mistake in this one. This one should be a negative there. So somehow i uh, got to account for that negative. So I can put that here. And then when I do a negative negative, that will cancel out. And so this will be a positive. Sorry about that. So I missed that one. So double check that you do have that. Okay, number eight is kind of extra for experts. So if you want to go through this, feel free or else you can go ahead to number nine. So if I try this, uh, this one's going to be some fancy little techniques. First of all, you let u equal square root of x. I don't see a function and its derivative, so i got to be creative. So we try to let u equal to that, and then I maybe can work this out a little bit better. Then you know that u squared is equal to x. Oh, that might help me a little bit. So now 2u du is equal to dx. So I can take this one out and replace it with 2u du. Now watch how this goes. So I rewrite this. This would be 1 over u minus 1, because I do have my chunk for the square root. And then dx is replaced with 2u du. So now I have 2u u minus 1 du. Now notice I have u to the first over u to the first, so I have to do long division. I'll go off to the side and do that. So I get 2 and then remainder 2. So that remainder I'm going to put divided by u minus 1. So that's how I'm going to rewrite my integral now. So this would be 2 plus 2 over u minus 1. du, now this isn't too bad, so I get 2u plus, this would be 2 ln of absolute value u minus 1 plus c. Now I do want this back in x, and so all i got to do is replace the u's with my x values now. So here's what I'm left with. 2 squared of x plus 2 ln absolute value of square root of x minus 1 plus c. For example 9, you can either memorize the formula or memorize how to do this. And that works for number 10 as well. 
So what I have now are these are these are quotients. So the cotangent comes from cosine over sine. So if I rewrite this as cosine of x over the sine of x, dx. Now I could let u equal to the numerator. However, I get du in the denominator, which we don't want. So I'm going to let u equal the sine of x. du is equal to negative, I'm sorry, positive cosine of x, dx. And so now I, I just really have the derivative u prime in the numerator and u in the denominator. So all I need to do is ln absolute value sine of x, that's my denominator, plus c. There you go. Now how about this one? Why don't you try number 10? Rewrite. Why don't you pause this? Are you pausing? Please pause. Very similar, except for I get this negative because I need to balance that one off, and so I did there. So I get negative ln cosecant x plus c. How about this one? What if I had what if I saw this instead? What if I saw that answer instead? Are these two the same? Yes or no? Why don't you figure that one out and come tell me in class? All right, thanks for this. I was, I was at the end of the page. I thought I was done, but I still have a couple more examples to do. So number 11, what do we do with this one now? Well, I look at this. If I take the derivative of the tangent of 2x, got to multiply by 2, so the antiderivative, i got to divide by 2. So I'm just going to get 1 half, and it's negative ln cosine of 2x plus c. And if I saw this answer, I would say that is okay as well. Both of those work. This one, however, comes straight from our rules for u substitution and ln. Example number 12. Uh, you might want to look at this for a while and see what you can do. But if you look, do you see a function and its derivative? Well, you can try to let u equal a lot of things. I don't think you're going to get this one to sort itself out. So maybe what you do instead is look at a trig substitution. We know that we have this thing. Everybody knows that one. But what if I take and divide by cosine squared? Everything by cosine squared. Some of you are seeing where I'm going now. So this is the tangent squared plus 1 is equal to the secant squared. So if I solve for the tangent squared, it's going to be the secant squared minus 1. Why don't we try that substitution instead and see what happens. So I look at this one, and this one's going to be secant squared x minus 1 dx. Oh, now it's kind of easy. So the, the thing with this one right here is that we're doing all this ln, all this other stuff, and then we say, nope, you do a trig thing. So look for different uh, ways to do this. What is the antiderivative of secant squared? There's your tangent. And there you go. That's how you do that one. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for listening. And I really hope that you have a great day. Take care. Thanks.